Well, in sixth grade, this is your um, history video for Thursday, October 22nd. And uh, we're going to be talking about Israel. Ancient Israel should be familiar to most of you. Uh, some of you, you probably have heard some things through Bible that would sound familiar. But we're reading pages uh, 74 to 78, and we're doing work text page 57. So let's look at that first. Work text page 57. And on that particular page, you uh, have... Basically, it's all from 76 to 78, and so after this introductory page. Um, but it talks about the main idea and then the details of that main idea. And the first main idea has God made many promises to Abraham in the, and I'll give you the answer for that one right there. It's called the Abrahamic Covenant, all right? Covenant, C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, Abraham, and then I-C. Uh, Abraham was the father of the nation of, and he was the father of the nation of, everybody should know, Israel. Blank was the land where Israel grew from a family into the nation. Um, and that was which land? Well, if you look to the right, it kind of gives you an idea. It says after about 400 years in Egypt. All right, so that's um, uh, Egypt was the land. And then number the fourth one down, it says the blank was the time when the blank left Egypt. Um, and so what was that talking about? Well, if you look on the right, it says Moses told the blank to let his people go because Pharaoh did not let them go. God unleashed blank blank on Egypt. God wanted the blank, the blank, and all blank to know that he was the one blank God. The ten plagues ended with a final blank on Egypt in which all the blank in the land were killed. Some of you know all these answers. You already know most of them. That one, all the firstborn children or firstborns in the land were killed. God told the Israelites to blank the blood of a sacrifice blank on each blank and on the blank above the door. Their blank protected them from blank when God judged Egypt. The Jews still remembered this event during a holiday called what? Well, um, Passover. That's what they celebrated. After the death of the Pharaoh's blank, the ruler of blank let the Israelites leave Egypt. So the blank was the time when they the blank left Egypt. So what was that? The blank was the time. Um, and so that would have been, what is the name of it when they left Israel? And if you think about it, it's the second book of the Bible, right? Because that's what that second book is all about, and about when they left Israel. And so it's the Exodus was the time when the Israelites left Egypt. And then the last one, Moses led the nation of Israel into the, that one's easy, two blanks, come on. Moses led Egypt, or led Israel into the, well, he actually led them into it, that's really kind of wrong, but to the promised land. And so the blank nation, oh, actually, Sorry, that's not correct. We're not there yet. This is before that. So Moses led the nation of Israel into the blank lake. And if you look at the right, it says the nation blank at the base of Mount Sinai. And blank declared that Israel was to be a nation set blank from, from all other nations. Israel was to blank these nations to the blank God. This way Israel would be a blank to them. All right. So um, this is, um, and I think that's talking about a particular place. All right. And so... Um, all right, so we, we're going to be doing the reading now, and so we had to follow along. Um, I, we can refer to some of those um, as I read them. We'll probably uh, find some things. Nothing will be on this first page, but some interesting information here. Why would a king need 10,000 snails? Thousands of special kind of snail from the deep waters of the Mediterranean Sea had to be caught, dried, boiled, and crushed to produce enough expensive and unfading red, blue, and purple dyes to color just one royal robe. These dyes were worth more than their weight in gold and were used only for the most important purposes. The tabernacle, according to Exodus 26, 1, was decked with red, purple, and blue curtains that may have been made with such dyes. Do you think one girl in this illustration is royal? It is not, like, it, it is not likely, although Terza is wearing a blue veil, but she is probably wealthier than Mala, the girl she is running toward. The blue headdress might have been made with linen threads dipped in dye made from lichens rather than the dye from snails. She's also wearing sandals. Most people went barefoot indoors, and some people went barefoot outside to save wear on shoes. The process of producing clothing involved many people, from the herders of sheep and growers of flax, to the spinners of thread and yarn, to the dyers, those people who dye things, and to the weavers, to the makers of cloaks and tunics. Many women would use wool or linen thread to weave fabric for their own household. In addition, villages sometimes had groups of people skilled in the textile trade. For example, 1 Chronicles 4.21 refers to the makers of fine linen in Ashbia. All right, and then you have that 
picture there at the bottom of the oracle, a, the purple dye is produced from the lichens. And a lichen is sort of like um, moss, but it's not. It's a different type of thing that grows on another plant. And so the lichens would be something that grows on this. Or actually, those are the lichens, it looks like. Um, yeah, so these, those are the lichens that are growing on the side of some. This, in this case, it looks like the side of a hill. But um, it made it cheaper that way. All right, page number 76. How is the history of Israel different from the history of other nations? Well, I, th I hope that's obvious to you that they are the only nation God chose. But we'll go ahead and read through this. In fact, let's look at the first thing. That was one of the answers to, to the parts there. Abra Abrahamic covenant. So you'll want to use this and listen as I'm doing it. Read page 57 on your uh, work text as I'm reading this to see where it matches up. And you can always pause the video to write an answer down and then continue the video or back it up a little bit so you can get a running start, so to speak. All right, so it says, When God created Adam and Eve, he blessed them. He blessed their seed so that they would be fruitful and multiply. He blessed them by giving them rule over land. But when Adam and Eve sinned, the blessing on the land and seed turned to judgment. As part of God's plan of redemption, God, God will, return, will turn the judgment into blessing again. God blessed Abraham's seed. God promised Abraham that his offspring would become a great nation. Okay, so there's one of them. The first one right there is where it begins. Um, God also blessed Abraham regarding land. His offspring would live in the land that God gave them. Through Abraham, God would bless all the families of the earth. Jesus, a descendant of Abraham, would offer the blessing of redemption to all people. So, there you have um, three definitions, which we'll get into here in just a moment. Um, but uh, Abraham and Abrahamic covenant and Israel. All right, and so... Israel's beginning. Israel's history is unlike the history of any other nation. Much of Israel's history is recorded by prophets. God's purposes and actions in history are revealed more clearly in Israel's history, in Israel's history than in any other nation. Around 2090 BC, it's almost 4,000 years ago, well, it's a little bit over 4,000 years ago now, actually, God spoke to a man named Abram, who lived in Ur of the Chaldees, or Chaldeans. The people there worshipped many gods. Abraham believed in the same gods as those people. God chose to reveal himself to Abram. God told Abraham to leave Abram to leave Ur and to travel to wherever God showed him. Abram then believed in the one true God. God gave Abram many promises and changed his name to Abraham. This, these promises are called the Abrahamic covenant. We just read about that. In this covenant or binding agreement, that's what covenant means, is a binding agreement, God promised Abraham that his descendants would become a great nation. God promised to bless Abraham. God told him that all the nations of the world would be blessed through him. Abraham showed that he believed God by doing what God said. He moved his family to Canaan, the land where God told him to go. Because Abraham, Abraham believed God, God declared this former idolater to be a righteous man. And it was through what one thing? Faith. That's what it was. Abraham and his sons. The nation of Israel was a result of God's promises, but it did not form right away. Abraham had several sons, but not all of them were included in all the promises of the Abrahamic covenant. God chose only Isaac among, among Abraham's sons. Oh, excuse me again. And, Abra and I, among a Isaac's sons, only Jacob was chosen. But then God chose all of Jacob's 12 sons to inherit the promises. The 12 tribes that came from these form them formed a new nation. This nation was called Israel because that was a special name that God had given Jacob. The Israelites in Egypt. During Jacob's lifetime, a great famine struck Canaan. God had providentially moved Jacob's son, Joseph, to Egypt years before the famine. God enabled Joseph to interpret the Pharaoh's dream, which predicted the famine. Joseph was then made the second highest ruler in Egypt. Joseph oversaw the building of storehouses to prepare for the famine. When the famine struck, people from many nations went to Egypt for food. In this way, Joseph was a blessing to many nations. Joseph's father and brothers and their families migrated to Egypt. Joseph made sure that they were given a portion of good land to live in. After about 400 years, the families of Jacob and his sons had grown into a large nation. A new pharaoh came to power, and the Egyptians became concerned about the growth of the Israelites. Afraid that they would become too powerful, the pharaoh enslaved the Israelites. But they continued to grow in number, so the pharaoh commanded that all the male babies be killed. The people of Israel cried out to God. He heard their cry and called on a man named Moses to deliver the Israelites. Moses' early, early life... So, your secret word, which is right now, is called Daniel Kramer, because he's coming to interrupt. I just got a call. But anyway, we'll continue on here. Moses' early life reveals God's protection. 
when Moses was a baby, his mother hid him so he would not be killed. And so it says that um, she allowed the mother of Moses to care for him while he was a baby. In fact, she actually paid, paid her to take care of her own baby. And she didn't know it was her own baby, but that's what she did. Um, it says, when Moses was old enough, the Pharaoh's daughter raised him as an Egyptian. But Moses knew he was an Israelite. One day he saw an Egyptian taskmaster beating a fellow Israelite, so Moses killed the taskmaster. Because of this murder, Moses fled from Egypt. Later, God called him to return and lead the Israelites out of slavery, but Moses made many excuses. He did not feel qualified, yet God made it clear to Moses that he would deliver his people, and he wanted Moses to lead them. Moses returned to Egypt and told the Pharaoh to let, his, let God's people go. Okay, so continuing on here. I'm um, sorry, I got interrupted a couple times um, by that same person that is your secret word. Uh, so it says that uh, Moses returned to Egypt and told Pharaoh to let God's people go, but Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he did not let them go. Because of the Pharaoh's stubbornness, God unleashed ten plagues on Egypt. God wanted the Israelites, the Egyptians, and all people to know that he is the one true God. The ten plagues ended with a final judgment on Egypt in which all the firstborn in the land were killed. God instructed the Israelites to spread the blood of a sacrificed lamb on each doorpost and on the beam above the door. Their obedience protected them from death when God judged Egypt. Now, that was remember, that was part of the whole description there of what was going on on the fourth section. Um, after the death of the firstborn, the Pharaoh agreed to let the Israelites leave Egypt. This event in Israel's history is known as the Exodus, which took place about 1446. Moses, following God's direction, led the nation of Israel into the Sinai wilderness. That's that fifth section there. The nation gathered at the base of Mount Sinai. So the nation gathered at the base of Mount Sinai. Um, and God declared that Israel was to be a nation set apart, set apart from all of the nations. Israel was to point these nations to the true God. In this way, Israel would be a blessing to them. All right, so there are basically all your answers there. Then you have information about Moses, born into a Hebrew slave family. I told you about the times that he lived. Um, after a daughter of Pharaoh found him in a basket in the Nile River, that's all the stuff we've read um, and all the things that we know about him. All right, and then the ten plagues of Egypt there in the bottom. Do know those, and that may be something that comes up as a question on a quiz. All right, that's it for your reading today. Don't forget the secret word, and have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.